Preservation Thursday. Preservation Thursday. Boy, do we have a full slate of information for you. Hey, uh, uh, of course, Preservation Thursday. What would be Preservation Thursday without a shout out to the drop dead gorgeous Kim Savage over there in Richmond, Virginia. Women at Work Incorporated. You got it. Preservation, property management needs. She can get it. She can help you out. She can help you out. What is it? Uh, uh, 804-439-0333. Women at Work Inc. Description. Description. Link in the description. You can bet on it. Make sure you check the description today for links, ladies and gentlemen, because there will be a lot of links. A lot of links. Uh, uh, in the Gulf area, in the Gulf area, if you got your Sam's and uh, uh, Dunn's number, uh, uh, NAX 236118. Of course, that is uh, uh, the, the number, the code number for people who do a lot of remodeling. If you're properly licensed, Texas, Louisiana, Florida, they need help big time down there. Uh, uh, speaking with the young lady, her uh, 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 information will be in the... Her, her email address will be in the description. Also, she has the prop. Now, now here's where labor and people need to start coming together and think about things. This gal here has the proper licensing in Florida to do debris removals. She is out of labor, trailers, and trucks. So she's got the licensing. Uh, 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 Susan Rhymes, get a hold of her. Uh, as I said, the, the email contact information will be. In the description, in the description, uh, uh, going to start making a push. I've had a lot of, lot of inquiries, inquiries about diversifying inspection work, home checkbook. I've been in contact with uh, uh, the NARPI International folks, and guess what? Website's going to go back up. NARPI International and home checkbooks are going to be available. Um, speaking of education... International Association Field Service Technicians. Got an interview lined up. I have device, electric, electronic parts. Anybody want to send me a phone? I need a new phone. Uh, anyways, <laughs> what I want to talk about today, ladies and gentlemen, before I go any further, before I go any further, very special shout out coming up. I got to save it for the end. I, I, save it for the end. This individual has reached, her words, not mine, elite status in the property preservation industry. You're not going to want to miss this. You're not going to want to miss this. But let's talk about the plaguing issue in the industry. Employee independent contractor, ladies and gentlemen. Employee independent contractor. I say, I say, you're an employee. The industry says independent contractor. Now I say we ask the button, the industry. What the button? This is our new feature, ladies and gentlemen. New feature on Preservation Thursday. The button. Ask the button. You got a question? We'll ask the button. Okay, we're going to ask the button. We're going to ask the button. The button will tell us. The button knows all. Button. Are there true independent contractors in the property preservation industry? Bullshit level, DEFCON 5! Oh my goodness! DEFCON 5, ladies and gentlemen. BS level, DEFCON 5. You're an employee. You're an employee. You're an employee. Let's examine a couple elements of what is being attorneys around the country. And when I say attorneys around the country, I have received... Via labor, members of labor who have asked, talked, been in, in consult with counsel on this issue. And the, and, and the attorneys around the country are saying, that, oh, it's a California case. California is so liberal. California is crazy. Governor Moonbeam is a lunatic. Yes, he is. But let's put something in perspective for just a minute. California's labor laws, while maybe a little more unionish, liberalish, maybe, I don't know. I don't know. That's I'm not going to take a side on that. They are in compliance with the Federal Department of Labor and the IRS, which means 
Those labor laws are employee labor laws. They're in compliance with the terms set out by the IRS and all the taxing agencies. Now, some people, uh, uh, and I want somebody to think about this for just a minute. If all the attorneys around the country are saying, that's California law, that's California law, we only got AMS, we only got booze check, and we only got F field asset services. Oh, good googly wooglies, who be to do? That leaves Safeguard, Cyprix, MCS, MSI, Altisource. We can go on and on and on and on. On and on and on and on. Remember this, ladies and gentlemen. Remember this. Remember this. If you remember nothing else today, remember this. In Hearst v. Booze Check. Part of that case was subject matter jurisdiction. The court ruled. When the work product does not leave the state, you are conducting business and profiting in our state. Therefore, you must be licensed to conduct business in our state. Now, that is subject matter jurisdiction because Boostcheck tried to say, it doesn't matter. You, you're, you're filing in the wrong place because of our contract. We're here in New York, New Jersey, wherever they were. And the court said, oh, no, 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 no. Now, ladies and gentlemen, that element of that case has been used. It, this case, Hearst v. Booze Check, has been referenced in numerous subject matter jurisdiction cases since that decision was made in 2010. This is why I have a bone to pick with Eric Miller. He won't stop what's going on. He keeps doubling down, doubling down, doubling down. California has to be in compliance. Their laws have to be in compliance with. Maybe you need to do a backdoor approach on these attorneys. Maybe you need to do a backdoor approach on these attorneys. Now, I'm not, uh, I'm not saying I'm a, I'm a legal wizard or anything. Uh, I'm just kind of throwing it out. Uh, uh, this is why it's so important to keep uh, uh, records, to keep document, document your costs, your expenses, all, all this stuff. This is w why this becomes very critical Many people don't have a leg to stand on because they didn't keep paperwork. They discarded the email uh, as soon as they got paid on the property or whatever. So, uh, in that respect, in that respect, ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, were you doing... Uh, l l let me bounce a little MO. Industry MO, kind of modus operandi. Okay? Nobody... I want everybody to stop, sit down, take a deep breath, grab an extra cup of coffee, and just hear me out for just a minute. How many of you were looking in the business opportunities section of a website, uh, uh, any kind of advertisement, Craigslist, uh, uh, back page, any kind of advertising for work? How many of you were recruited out of a business opportunity advertisement? Or... Were you looking for work in the general labor section, skilled trade section, maybe of Craigslist, of the newspaper, of your local uh, uh, help wanted uh, uh, at the unemployment office? Where did you get found? How did you become involved in property preservation? I have yet to talk to anybody that said they were recruited for a business opportunity. They were walked through licensing uh, uh, procedures many times, insurance procedures many times. Um, now, they were basically hired. You were looking for a job, so you didn't really think twice. You already had an employee mindset because you, you were looking for work. You were looking for work. You didn't have a business license and insurance and all these expenses over your head when you made an agreement to say, hey, I'll mow the lawn for $15, and then you find out it cost you $22.
the big issue in the industry right now is compliance. Is everybody compliant? Are you compliant? Are you, yeah, yeah. You have to do a background check. I'm sorry. I don't understand how a background check makes you compliant with licensing rules and regulations in a jurisdiction. I'm, I'm failing to grasp that new revenue stream for the members of the National Association of Management for Stealing. I'm sorry. I don't get that. A background check, whether you robbed a bank in 1929 or 1985, is immaterial if you don't have the proper licensing. Our special person, our special person. We'll get to that. We'll get to that. Here's what these companies do. They find you looking for work. They find out, and come on. Everybody tell the truth. Everybody tell the truth. When you get hired at a job, you come in and you just knock it out of the park. You get busy. You do it all. It's good. It's done. Right. Blah, 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 blah. You all know it. Every one of us is guilty of it. That's the nature of the beast, ladies and gentlemen. It's just the nature of the beast. So all of a sudden, this company, hey, these guys are doing great work. Boom, let's bombard them. They get buried in work. They get buried so bad in work, they don't have time to think about other clients, cash flow, uh, they're getting 85 phone calls per property per day because you got a bunch of idiots that don't know how to communicate with each other in the cubicles and they all want to know something. I, I've literally had six phone calls on the same property from the same cubicle monkey. You know I'm telling the truth. You know I am telling the truth. This is not, you can't make this nonsense up. You can't make it up. Now, now, you're so buried in work, you're doing 70, 80, 90% of your workload because here and there somebody says, oh, hey, you do this. Yeah, come on, help me. I'll, I'll, I'll take care of you. So you jump on it because it's a cash paying gig. You're going to get paid tomorrow the next day. Not 35, 40, 50, 60 days down the road, you get an email saying, you forgot this picture. So we're back charging you. You're like, huh? You can't even go back and clean it up, you know. That is the crux of the employee scenario. Now, I'm going to come at you, Mr. Carson, Mr. Ben Carson, Mr. Craig Carnes, Kimberly Satterfield. You have problems on these contracts right now. Why are you not using the local offices in the jurisdictions to find local talent? I know right now, for a fact, you got an issue with 4S, Nevada and Idaho experiment with Ben Carson. Ladies and gentlemen, check it out. Alliday LLC, at Alliday LLC. I'm on Twitter. We're going to click this to Ben Carson on Twitter. Come tag it. Come tag it. Let's get a campaign going and get Mr. Carson. Let's bring the work home. Let's bring the work home. We don't need an office in Atlanta giving a contract to somebody in Dallas to do work in Nevada who wants to give the contract to somebody in Pennsylvania who can't get the job done in Pennsylvania because they bid the contract so low because they had their head up there behind and they don't know what they're doing. VRM, VRM just had the contract, Freddie Mac contract taken away. That ought to tell you something about volumes and the outsourcing that's going on, ladies and gentlemen. That ought to tell you something. <clears throat> ben Carson, I, I, I'll tag... Kimberly Satterfield in this, and I'll, I'll get Craig Carnes too. I'll get him on this. I don't. I don't understand that procedure. It makes no sense to me. We have an office in Reno. We have one in Vegas. We have one in Boise, Idaho. Those offices find the local talent. They they're going to know if that guy's properly licensed. They're going to know if this stuff's being properly disposed of. They're going to know how much those costs are. So are you getting bilked? Are you getting beat up? You develop community relationships with people in the community. This is what Make America Great Again is all about. To stop the outsourcing there, HUD. Let's come directly where the work is and hire the people locally. Well, let, let's, let's be real, let's be real, let's be real. One of the things you can do, if you think I am kidding about any of this, ladies and gentlemen, here's what, here's what you do. Send me any company's contract. I don't care what it is. I'm going to pull all their names out of it. I'm going to stick it in front of the Department of Labor and the Department of the I R 
IRS, the Internal Revenue Service, will find out if those contracts pass muster for independent contractor status. Real simple. Speaking of somebody recruiting very heavy, very, 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 very heavy, and and uh, uh, I would think I saw a sign over on a, a picture on LinkedIn. I shot it to somebody who posted it over in the Facebook one, a couple other groups over on Facebook. I'm not sure which group it came out of, but I, I, I in, in my humble opinion. It elicited the wrong response from a company. Now, let me set the background a little bit here. Companies out recruiting really heavy. A company's been asked on LinkedIn, are you properly licensed in the jurisdictions you're subbing all the work to? A sign comes up. Of course, you got all the hurricane stuff, all the cleanup work. We... Somebody posts a sign, and it's in Florida. Uh... uh <clears throat> it even gives the code, the, the 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 penal code violation if you're caught doing work unlicensed. Now, that's all the sign says. If you're doing unlicensed contracting work, it's a ten thousand dollar fine per Florida. Blah blah blah. Call this eight eight six six number to report any crime you see. The caption on that picture ain't this a kick in the head? That's what was posted company out of Florida, for whatever reason, for whatever reason, I want to ask you guys something right now. We all see who's screaming the loudest about the Russians, the people who have the ties to the Russians. We all see Monsanto spending billions of dollars to suppress test results on glyphosate and dicamba. Now a company jumps out of nowhere a company jumps out of nowhere to defend their licensing in the state of Florida. I'm baffled. I'm baffled. I write about it. I talk about it. I let them know, hey, what's really going on? What's really going on? Why would you jump all up and down about how in compliance you are? Ain't that a kick in the head? Ain't that a kick in the head, huh? So that person wrote me an email bragging about their elite status. They have reached elite status now that they have been elected president of the National Association of Mortgage Field Services. They've reached elite status in the property preservation industry. I spoke about them. Justice. If I'm speaking about you, you have questionable behavior in this industry. It's not because you've reached elite status. It's because you're doing something you shouldn't be doing. You came out of nowhere talking about how incompliant you were, and my sources tell me you took the post down, which means Eric Miller got in your ear and told you to shut your mouth. Tell me I'm wrong, Justice. Tell me I'm wrong. He got in your ear and said, you need to shut up. I'm surprised he let you talk as long as he did. I am surprised he let you talk as long as he did. Now, ladies and gentlemen, since Justice B. Smith is so proud of her company, since Justice B. Smith is so certain that she's in compliance with all of the contracting laws in the state of Florida, all of the employee classifications in the state of Florida, let's put them to the test. Shall we? Send me their contracts. I've already looked at one a couple years ago. It was garbage. It, they, they're, check the website out. Their employee status. They make you an employee. In their contract, they offer you training. <coughs> good googly wooglies, good googly wooglies. Justice, justice, justice. <laughs> you know, you know, I may only have 86 followers on YouTube, but my post views on LinkedIn routinely get three to 500 hits. 
So you might want to back your Jeep up before you get froggy because the last president of NAMFS that got into something with me, I think that other lunatic in the mountain ended up getting involved in guess. I think she's at a restaurant now. Hi, Dan. How are you? You notice Mr. Miles didn't get too froggy with anybody. He kind of wants his company left intact. Row Enterprises. Nothing personal. You opened the door. I got, I got, I got. We got to ask the question now. Are you in compliance with Florida law? Let's find out. Oh, and by the way, they're in Alabama and Georgia. Are they in compliance with Alabama and Georgia law? I find nothing in Alabama for you. I find nothing in Georgia for you. Am I looking in the wrong place? Am I looking in the wrong place? I don't know, Justice. I don't know. You're the president of NAMFS, National Association of Management for Stealing. That is our surprise this week, ladies and gentlemen. That is our surprise. That is our surprise. She says she's in compliance with all the state laws. Let's ask the button, ladies and gentlemen. Let's ask the button. Button. Is Row Enterprises Incorporated in compliance with all the licensing laws in the jurisdictions they conduct business in? Oh, come on now. That ain't even bullshit. That's horseshit. Ho, ho, ho. It's not even BS. It don't even qualify to be BS, ladies and gentlemen. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Think about what I'm saying, ladies and gentlemen. Look at the elements of the California what is being called now in the legal arena in property preservation right now, the California case, because you know the members of NAMFS are licking their chops at that phrase. Try filing unemployment. If you are doing 70% or more of your work for that one company, I don't care who it is, try filing unemployment. Put that contract in front of somebody who can say, this isn't a work, this isn't a contract. This is an employee agreement. And that's what you want to do, ladies and gentlemen. That's what you want to do. If you like what you hear, give us a thumbs up, huh? Subscribe to the station. You never know. You never know how that works. Ding a ling. People who subscribe to the station and you see that number, that means they've turned the bell on so when I publish, they get notified. But what what the hey, huh? What the hey? Have a great day, ladies and gentlemen. If you can make a donation, hit the website, help us out a little bit. Uh, we're getting ready to move. I may that. Let me get to that before I get out of here. It. I don't know next week yet. Uh, uh, it's going to be very, 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 very hectic. I won't be long. I won't be gone long. But we'll we'll get uh, uh, some short blasts out next week during the week. Uh, uh, trying to work something out with. Uh, uh, International Association of Field Service Technicians. I do have some interviews lined up on the education. Uh, uh, and again, I'm going to start making a big push for education. You got an education platform? You want it out in front? Let's talk about it. Let's get it out there. Let's talk about the industry, ladies and gentlemen. Let's talk about how we are labor. I am labor. You are labor. We are labor, ladies and gentlemen. Let's talk about that. And let's have labor. Let's bring labor's voice up. International Association, Field Service Technicians. How come nobody is making a stance on the employee independent contractor issue? Nobody has taken a position. Could it be, could it be the elected people of the board of directors are also a member of NAMFS? I don't know. I don't know. That is the question that's being asked, but we're going to talk about that organization's education program, where it came from, how they developed it. All that good stuff. Uh, you know how I am with education. Steve Hardy, aid, property preservation. Anybody know Steve Hardy, aid, property preservation? Who made this company the authority on policy and procedure in the property preservation industry? Any information, any information on Steve Hardy, aid, property preservation? Email. Alliday LLC at the Gmail, ladies and gentlemen. Alliday LLC at the Gmail. It's time to get up out of here. Like what you hear, like I said, give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the station. If you can make a donation, it's it's greatly appreciated right now. Things are tough. 
We will be moving into a new arena, and you're going to love it, ladies and gentlemen. You're going to love it. I can't talk too much now. Let's have a great day. Let's all be safe out there.